Hey folks, we're going to talk about digital to analog converters. How to produce a voltage given a digital word input for pulse code modulation. All right, so here's the, here's the deal. I have a binary value, maybe something like this. A nice 8-bit value. And I want to turn this into a voltage. Now it doesn't have to be, you know, that number. In other words, whatever this number works out to, it doesn't have to be that many millivolts. It just needs to be scaled appropriately, you know, so that all ones, if I was doing this as an unsigned value, if this was all ones, it'll be my biggest number. Well, what is that? Could be a volt, could be two volts. That doesn't really matter, right? I just need to make sure that it's a linear uh, translation from the binary value to the voltage. How do I do that? It turns out this is actually relatively straightforward. Um, Probably one of the simplest things you can do, and it does have some limits, but this is probably one of the simplest things you can do, is to make yourself a weighted summing amplifier. So I can have multiple inputs here. All right. um, I'm just going to stop with four of them, but we could have more. Here's my op amp. Right, there's my output. I feed the binary value on these various inputs. Okay, now the way I'm going to set this up is this guy is going to be my most significant bit. And down here will be my least significant bit. And I just choose some appropriate resistor values. Now, just to keep the numbers easy, I'm going to make this a K, I'm going to make that 1K, and I'm just going to double these as we work up 2K, 4K, 8K and so on and so forth. But I'm just going to leave this with four bits just to show what's happening. Okay? So here's what ends up happening. The gain of the first or upper channel, so to speak, is 1K over 1K, which is a gain of 1. Right? Now, it is inverting. That's no big deal. We can, we can always put another inverter on here to flip it back if that's important. But as far as the magnitudes are concerned, the gain for the upper channel is 1. For the next channel, it's 1K over 2K, or... 0.5. The next channel is 1k over 4k or 0.25. And you can see what's happening here, right? Then it's an eighth, 0.125. We just keep cutting it in half, which perfectly echoes what's happening here, right? So if you think of this as unity, this would be half the value and a quarter of the value and an eighth of the value, and so on and so on and so on. So we simply put the values out here, you know, for example, like just to be simple about it, you know, like a 5 volt TTL value, put 5 volts on there. If you have a value like 1001, okay, then the 1, that's a 5 volts, that gets multiplied by 1. So you get 5 volts for that. The 0 gets multiplied by 0.5, which is nothing. The next 0 gets multiplied by a quarter, which is nothing. Okay, and then finally, you take an eighth. Right? You put this one on here, you have an eighth of five volts. Okay? So you get five eighths of a volt. Add that up. Well, you have five and five eighths of a volt. That's the output voltage here. As you change these numbers, you know, for example, if you had the exact opposite, if you had 0, 1, 1, 0, then it would be 0 for this. You'd get 1 times the 0.5. Then you'd have 1 times the 0.25. Okay, um, so, you know, what are those values, right? Obviously, we're going to have zero over here. So, so uh, 0.5 times the 5 volts is 2.5 volts. 0.25 times the 5 volts would be 1 and a quarter volts. So, you're going to end up with 3 and 3 quarter volts in that case, right? And so on and so forth. And, you know, and so on and so forth. If we had all zeros here, we get nothing out. If it's all ones... Uh, we're going to be just a little bit less. We're actually going to be an eighth of a volt less um, than 10 volts, right? The max value. Problem with this is, if you have a lot of bits, these values get huge. If you had a 16-bit system, that top value is going to be over 65 mega, uh, mega ohms. It's not very practical. You have issues with um, the accuracy of these resistors, Leakage currents, uh, you know, little bias currents, things like that are going to throw you off. 
So there's, um, there's a nicer way to do this, and that's through the use of an R2R R ladder network. I mean, this is nice to sort of, it's a good visual, but we can hook up this little R2R R ladder network to a summing amplifier and, you know, get a really nice result out of this, right? So, R2R R ladder network, you might have looked at one of these in a circuits class, but it's kind of a unique little configuration of resistors. It's just a little series parallel um, resistor network. We're just going to repeat a bunch of values over and over and over again. Like so. So here's our input voltage. Right? Across the top, all these resistors have a value of R, whatever R is. Maybe it's 10K. These vertical values are all two times that, with the exception of the last one. The last one is just R. So this could be 10K, 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 20K, 20K, 20K. It doesn't really matter what the R value is, right? Let's call this point A, point B, point C, point D, point E. Now, figure out what happens with the voltage. Voltage E, right? This is just a one-to-one -one voltage divider. So E must be half of whatever voltage D is. What's voltage D? Well, that's a voltage divider based on whatever C was in this divider. Well, what's this divider? Well, it's this R in series with this triplet of resistors. What's that? R plus R, which is 2R in parallel with 2R. Well, that's R. R, R, that's going to be 1 half. So D is 1 half of C. Now remember that. This whole thing is R. So we move back to C. Well, that's a divider on B, this resistor and this complex. Well, I already know that these equal R. So that's R in series with R, which is 2R. In parallel with this 2R is R again. Hey, it's half again. So C is half of B. And this just keeps on going, right? So B is going to wind up being half of A. Now, it would also be true that the current's flowing down here because these voltages keep getting cut in half. These voltages getting cut in half mean that the currents have to get cut in half because it's the same size resistor. I can use these currents as the input currents into a summing amplifier. I can simply use a little switch, you know, transistor switch right here to connect those in. I just have a constant source voltage out here. You sum the currents into my amplifier. Bingo, we've got our uh, digital analog converter. All right now. You could buy a DA converter, right, instead of building this discreetly, you could just go and buy a chip that does this. But very often, uh, a digital analog converter, a DAC, these things are designed for a constant current output, okay? So you think of them in terms of being a current source rather than a voltage source, which means that whatever they're connected up to, so here's your DAC, right? Here's a load resistor. Well, if this is constant current, then obviously our load will determine what your load voltage is. So if that's a variable, then the voltage changes. So very often what we have to do is put a, uh, a little trans-resistance amplifier, a current-controlled voltage source, out here. In other words, one of these guys. Right, basically a parallel parallel. Right, RF sets the trans resistance. So this would be coming in from the DAC. This isolates this, right? This current comes through. This sets up the output voltage, and you get a nice constant V load out here. Right, so that's a common configuration that we would use. There it is.